Hello everyone, I'm a friendly tree and welcome to another episode of Nina Williams in depth. Today I want to talk about Nina's back sway and her Hayashida step. So first off, let's just check the settings. We'll put that on default settings. That's all okay. We're going to display the command history. We don't need a health gauge with player attack information, hit properties and detailed player frame data. It's all okay. Alright, so what is Nina's back sway and what is her Hayashida step? If we go onto the move list, the only place that we can see her back sway is her snake shot or reverse rolling dash. Reverse rolling dash, sorry, snake shot to reverse rolling dash, with reverse rolling dash being the in-game name for her back sway. The other place we will find it is her ice pick and her, uh, where is it, throw, her betrayer throw. There we go, betrayer. So the back sway is the quarter circle back, that movement there. Oh, not that, that. So we do that movement, Nina sways back. So it's a down, down, back, back movement. Ice pick is doing that motion, and that input comes out. Betrayer is doing that motion, and the throw comes out. That being her unbreakable throw. They can still duck it, they cannot break it. Uh, from snake shot, from side set one, side set one back goes into the reverse rolling dash. And this is very powerful for her side step one pressure, as you would have seen in my previous videos. When people do a side step one cancel, what they're doing is they're getting into the back sway and they're cancelling the back sway. So that gets on to the next important thing about the back sway. The back sway can be cancelled. So during the back sway, you can do different moves. Depending on the timing, you'll either get a while standing or a standing move. So from a back sway, you do it instantly and you get a standing move unless there's a motion in there such as 1 plus 4 or if you hold it and do that so what I'm doing is I'm doing quarter circle back neutral and getting that if you want to do it while standing quarter circle back delay then, or quarter circle back neutral delay input now funny enough if you do a back sway from a side step 1 it's the opposite so if you press a button instantly, you get a while standing. If you delay, you get a standing. So that's quite important to know, just for just for your gameplay. But we don't have to use an attack to cancel the back sway. We can also side step cancel it, or up back cancel it, which is a lot harder, in my opinion. Anyway, that's where Hayashida step comes in. The origin of Hayashida Step, I've got to be honest, I don't really know. I know Hayashida is a surname in Japanese, so I'm going to assume that the name Hayashida Step came from whoever first found it or started, or made it popular with Nina. Nina is one of three characters in Tekken 7 that has a back sway, but the fun thing about hers is how evasive it can be. We'll talk about that a little well in a moment. The Hayashida Step is doing a back sway in whatever way and then doing a cancel with movement, so either up or up back, so sidestep into the background or an up back, and then doing another back sway from it. So unless you're using a special peripheral, well special controller of sorts, you can only do this with the up back method or the up method. In other words, you can only sidestep into the background, not the foreground to do this. Meaning, against different characters, it's going to be stronger on different sides. Now, I mentioned the evasion before. And that's where I wanted to quickly just demonstrate the evasion. Hayashida step is... or Nina's back sway in general, I should say. It's not just putting you into a crouch position. It can avoid some mids. So, for example, certain moves, where if I duck, I get hit. Oh, sorry. Well, didn't come out. I did it too early. There we go. If you back sway, you can actually make it evade. So this, it can be risky, but it can give Nina some situations or some, some strings that she can counter in unique ways that other characters cannot. 
I mean, often these moves can be avoided in different ways anyway. But it's a tool that Nina has that we should keep in mind. And obviously in these scenarios, often a backdash won't work. <laughs> it's tricky. Okay, a better example might actually be something like this. Well, I'm not getting it. I'm doing it too early. There we go. So that's an option of something that it's a mid. You can see it's a mid. If I try and duck, I get launched. But oh, but if I get the timing right and I back sway, it'll completely whiff, and I can launch it myself. So that's a bit of a rundown of how you should step in that way. Something else we can look at could be just a simple back, simple back sway here. So you can see here how it can avoid a mid, but with this evasion you can see her physically move out of the way, meaning if you have mids that have better reach, it'll work. And these can be risky sometimes. Certain frames it'll block lows. But obviously if you do a slower low then, or if you delay the timing, it will not block it. So it's on some frames, it'll beat certain mids, some frames it'll block lows, other frames it'll block mids. Yeah. Okay, the trickiest thing with the Hayashida step is the inputs of course, and this is what I want to demonstrate here. So you can see the stick here of course, we'll start by doing the stick and then we'll do it on pad. So that's how I do the back sway. You see I'm grabbing down, grabbing with my thumb from the left side. From there, you cancel it with the up. So the way I'm doing it, it's not the cleanest input, but it's the most consistent in my opinion, is doing the back sway, then cancelling during the back sway with an up. I'm pretty much doing quarter circle back neutral up. So that means there are more frames where I'm going to be vulnerable to be hit by a mid here, but I still, well, I still get the same effect with the evasion. Likewise with side step one, the snake shot into the rolling back dash, you can do it the same way. You can do this from other moves and you just need to get used to the recovery of the mo those moves to get the timing right. All right. On the other side, of course it's a different motion you have to use with your hands. So I push down and then I'm using this part of my hand here to do the majority of the movement back. You can if you're comfortable doing it, I find it quite tricky, but instead of doing the neutral up me method, you can just you can just roll it, but I find it very inconsistent, that's how you get a faster, faster Hayashida going. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get it, if you get it just right, I can't do it, sorry. Oh my god, I've gotten a lot worse at this. Yeah. So you can see the input there, what I was doing there is I'm doing a roll, so I'm not completely letting go of the input, I've done a quarter circle back to up. Yeah. Opposed to doing the neutral. So that's the input there, and of course from snake shot, or from side set one. <laughs> you get used to cancelling it so early from snake shot. You leave it, you leave it go. <laughs> Ooh, 
very unclean. I think a tip that I should point out here, because it's clearly something that I need to be practicing myself, and I hope you can all appreciate that I'm not trying to claim that I'm some expert at doing the move, I'm just trying to demonstrate how it's done. So what about having a think about how we can practice this? So a good way to start, making sure that you know how the input you need to do, and then you can start by doing it very slow. If you do it very slow, you can get a feel for the timing. And hopefully over time, you can do it faster and faster. And not jump. Yeah. So I definitely find it weirder on the player two side. So that, that's a good way you can practice it. So just start with it being slow, and slowly get faster. Yeah. That's it with stick. Let's see if we can get the pad to work. My pad broke, by the way, everyone, so... Apologies if this doesn't work too well. And also just give me a second to visually confirm it is working. Oh, bit of freezing here and there. Doesn't do any harm, does it? Good, all right. So you can see it here. On pad, the quarter circle back motion is pretty easy, just using your thumb. And then you've just got to get used to, yeah. definitely easier to do on pad in my opinion but it's all about practicing so I'm still I'm just doing the quarter circle back neutral up to do this yeah if I go on the other side same deal so quarter circle back looks like that And once again, you can you can just roll it if you feel comfortable, but it's preference really. I find it doesn't work too well with the rolling, so I actually go neutral, which makes it a little bit less clean. But let's see, do it still. Yeah. All right. So that's it on pad. That's it on stick. Likewise, on pad, you just want to practice. You get the back sway, cancel into the side step up. Do it slow first, and then as you get better, you do it faster and faster. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's it for inputs. The application of the backsway in the Hayashida step is a different story. So, why would we do the Hayashida step over, well, over a backdash cancel, for example? And this really comes down to your own experience, your own comfort, and what you're trying to achieve. It also depends on the character and the side you're on. Like I said, depending on the side you're on, depending on the, the moves you're expecting an opponent to use, determine whether or not you'd do a backdash cancel, or you'd risk doing a Hayashida. Or a backsway for that matter. So you can use it to bait moves. For example, if you are looking at an opponent, if you're looking at doing something like a 1 plus 4 and seeing how they react after that. So let's say let's say they block a 1 plus 4 let's say they block a 1 plus 4 and they retaliate with jabs or even a short range mid. You can see how that can be quite effective against some mids. Likewise if they're retaliating with a not so fast low, or just a low in general, Hayashida can be a good option where you're covering some mids, the high, the highs, and the low at the same time. The backswing zone. Did I say Hayashida? Yeah. 
So that's something you can do there, and that'll cover not only not only highs and lows, but some mids as well. Opposed to if we just duck, we're getting hit by all the mids. So of course we'll avoid the highs, and we'll block the lows still. Oh, why didn't that block? <laughs> anyway, that's just a recording issue, so... <laughs> that's weird. So it might be because I held down. In that scenario, there might be a bit of a weird thing in this mode. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. <laughs> Okay, so you can you can use it if you anticipate the opponent attacking, because then you can re retaliate in a way that seems effective, in whatever way you think is effective. Um, you can use the Hayashida in that way, even if it's just one or two side steps. Oh, sorry. Because you're also creating distance, and you might cut you might be covering other options. Oh. Not as an example. Maybe we'll get something a bit linear. Yeah. See, they look like a higher shooter would still. No, never mind. I was just a bit slow. Anyway, you can use the higher shooter to also create more distance there, depending on what you expect them to do. Um, you can do that in any scenario, whether it be just a backsway or or a higher shooter. But anyway, that's kind of how you can use it at close up. So if you're anticipating an opponent to attack or retaliate in a certain way, you can use it as an evasive measure. Um, another common option with the back sway up close is actually doing it from side step one, of course, as a cancel to keep frame advantage. Um, you can use it, like I said, to evade and do launches. Or even an unbreakable throw. So depending on what the opponent's doing, even if they don't retaliate, you still have pressure you can apply from the backsway or the Hayashida. But with the backward movements, a lot of the time what we're doing is we're creating distance with it, aren't we? So why would we do a Hayashida over the constant backflips I accidentally do? Or over the backdash cancelling? A big reason is because you're also sidestepping it the same way. So, like I said, if you think the opponent's approaching with a tool that you could sidestep or you could evade with a backsway, that's going to be more effective than you just backdashing and hoping it whiffs. So it's another way that you can create a whiff because you're also having that evasive factor involved. Um, you can also use it for positional advantage. So let's say, let's say I'm on player one side as I am, and to well in the foreground is a wall so instead of me just sidestepping up or back dashing sidestep up i can hayashida wow god and while i'm hayashida while i'm doing the hayashida i'm also getting myself into a better position so that the opponent has their back closer to the wall and then i can go in for the kill if i want <laughs> if appropriate um, you can also use it at range to bait, so like I said with the back sway, you can do side step one and cancel it, or you can just do side step, well, back sway on its own, because it can throw people off on your movement, because a lot of the time people might look for a twitch movement, and hey, Nina's great at doing these twitch movements, so you can use that to help just control, control what's going on, and then approach as necessary. I think there's a lot you can do with the back sway at the wall though. So it's really, it's for making big reads a lot of the time. It's for adding an evasive factor with your defense. Or even, you can use it in an offensive way, like I said, from the sidestep one and such. Positional control is another thing I need to, you need to consider. But then let's say you've already got the positional control. What can we do then? So when we're at the wall, it's more a back sway you're going to be using at the wall, but from the back sway, they can't walk back, so suddenly the throw here becomes a lot more threatening. 
you've suddenly, from the backsway, you've got a plus on block wall bounce that hits on the ground you can do. And you can just use it to help control your position away from the wall. So you can use it to chase people. If they're trying to sidestep up to get away from the wall, you can Hayashida to, to cover their attacks a bit while also keeping them close to the wall. I did also want to talk about actually using the backsway for post combo pressure. So probably the most common stuff you'll see, actually let's start with the tech catch, would be stuff like if we do a wall hit any in down foot one and a backsway. So if we do that, do you see their tech roll? The only option they have to, is to duck the unbreakable throw there. If they go either direction. But of course they can still duck it. So if they recover, crouch and guard. Yeah. So it's not, not like a guaranteed throw setup, but it's a good way to catch a lot of people there. Um, if they don't do anything, or if they wake up in a different way, you can still have any tool you want. And like I said, you've got oh, like I said, you've got a plus on block wall bounce that hits OTG. So that's a very scary tool you can do in this situation. What if they attack? So let's say wake up mid kick. You've got plenty of time still. So in this scenario you can confirm and you can still get your wall bounce there. So you can see the threat there. That one we can't do, but like I said, we've got a bunch of other options we can do. Oops. Like I said, sorry, if you delay the input, oh my god, if you delay the input, well, you get while standing, or you can do a standing move depending on the timing. Oh my god. Great examples here. Hope you guys will appreciate my input errors. Anyway, you've got other options you can do from it, so keep that in mind. Now, what if we do a different combo ender? Because sometimes we don't want to only get. 41 damage, we may want to get something more like 56 damage. If you do a back sway here, you've got some great options. If they do a toe kick, they can get completely resplayed again. That'll, yeah. <laughs> you can see it, it can at least cover. It can at least cover the low kick there, and even if you don't get a punish in that scenario against all the characters, you still get to maintain pressure because you're at frame advantage. It'll make the mid completely whiff. Oh. It'll make the mid completely whiff, trust me. So you can get another resplat. I didn't show Spring Attack for the option before, but Spring Attack, um, Backsway loses to Spring Attack from the other option before. But if you do this, you're plus 14 for a punish. Ah. Unfortunately, you can't wall splat in that situation. It does depend a little bit depending on hitboxes and the timing of your backsway. So in these scenarios that you're seeing here, oh, <laughs> as you can see it can give you a bit of a varying result. So that was only plus 10 there. But either way you can see how it can beat, can beat a spring attack. If we, oh, if we change things up to a side roll in this scenario. We still, we still have a good situation for an advantage there. So you delay and you can still get like your while standing one or whatever you want really to continue pressure. You can even go that. 
So for example... Oh. God, I am not good at this. There we go. This is what happens when you don't play every day, everyone. <laughs> you get locked in. Yeah. Either way, you got options, still. For both directions. So that's how Backsway can be used at the wall. Of course, if you're on the defensive, I'd say it's a pretty risky option near the wall, because it's essentially like ducking in situations where you're not sure what they're going to do at the wall. And obviously, in most cases, unless you're thinking of a couple of 2D characters, ducking near the wall makes you v at very high risk. Even if I do something like that, for example. Opposed to the opposite, which, or the alternative, which might just be something like that. Which, I mean, yeah, indeed, doing a backsway and avoiding it there does get you away from the wall but it's, it's very high risk. So I would not really suggest Haya doing a backsway or a Hayashida when your back is to the wall. I'd more suggest you just do backdash sidestep block because you don't want to leave yourself vulnerable to the many mid attacks that could splat you or put you in an unfavorable position. It is still an option though, it's still a risky thing you could do. You could even get into a betrayer or get into doing like an upward one plus two throw, which as long as it makes contact will get you away from the wall, whether they're now at the wall or you're now closer to mid-screen. Okay, um, those are my tips for Backsway and Hayashida Step. I think um, the most important thing in this video was actually looking at the inputs. I apologise that my Hayashida Step isn't too clean, I'm not a player who actually uses it too often because I am, I'm fearful of all the mids that can hit with it and it often does result in being quite a high risk scenario for Nina in my opinion. But choose your matchups, get some familiarity with what moves and what positions you can use it well in, and please let me know when you like to use the backsway and the Hayashida step. Please comment below, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. You win. What's done is done.